Greetings. Um, I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking to you about uh, the expectations, requirements, and guidelines for Paper 2. Um, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and get a copy of the guidelines for Paper 2, put me on pause, print them out, or at least put them up on your computer screen so that you can follow along with me. All right. Paper 2 is going to ask you what's happening in American life in what uh, historians call the early republic. Uh, generally speaking, I'm talking about the time frame of 1800 to approximately 1837. Now, to answer that question, I'm going to refer you to your big green book. This guy, the textbook. Pay particular attention to chapter 9 and chapter 10. And if you haven't already done so, read those chapters and read them carefully. Ask yourself what's going on and how Americans are responding to it. Okay? Now, there are two things that I think that you'll, you'll conclude upon reading those chapters. Issue number one, what's happening in America during that time period is that we're beginning to industrialize. You're beginning to see the American Industrial Revolution. Now, it's not just your textbook that's going to illuminate this. You're also going to see it in, uh, in, the, in the videos, um, the Shaping America videos, particularly uh, uh, lessons fifth, um, 14, 15, and 16. So there are a variety of different ways of understanding what's happening. Um, now, how does Sam Patch, this book, have anything to do with what's happening as far as industrialization goes? Well, to answer that question, I'll have another video segment up here in just a second, but to answer that question, ask yourself what is it that Sam Patch does for a living, uh, before he started jumping off of waterfalls, that is. What is it that he does? How is he treated? And most importantly, how does he understand what industrialization, and particularly the factory owners, are doing to the institution of American freedom? Think about those issues as you contemplate writing a two to three page paper. Now, as far as the guidelines go, nothing has changed from the last time. Um, you still need to be careful not to plagiarize. Uh, you still need to at least have two full pages of text and no more than three. Um, you still need to abide by the general formatting rules, uh, 12 point font, uh, double spacing, so on and so forth. Because none of this should be new, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you will read the entirety of the guidelines when you have a moment on your own. For right now, I, I want to take you through some of the readings, uh, the online readings, that I think are going to be very helpful when it comes to writing this paper. Um, right underneath, if you've got the, pa the pa paper guidelines in front of you, right underneath the question itself, you'll see another section right here that uh, it'll point out readings that very well may be useful in terms of both thinking about and also writing this paper. Now understand something, I'm not saying that if you include every one of these uh, readings in your paper, you're guaranteed an A, and if you only have three or four of them, well that's the best that you can do is a C. Please don't understand that me, uh, me that way, rather. Um, what I'm getting at here is that the readings that I've listed directly engage the central question in that they involve industrialization and in some form or format they also involve what people perceive to be a limitation on American freedom. Let me get, just give you two examples and by the way I, I've asked you in the discussion forums these very same questions. About the, uh, the third reading from the bottom of those bullet points there in the middle of the page um, a document written by Seth Luther, the address to the working men of New England, it's in your online readings 10 on page 273. Now, I'm, again, I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of you have read that document thus far, and you know that what Seth Luther does is he really challenges what the factory owners in places like New England are doing to the institution of American freedom. Many of you know that a lot of the quote-unquote workers that were employed in those textile mills were actually children. And they worked 12, 14-hour days. They were given 20 minutes for lunch. 
um, that in and of itself is pretty oppressive conditions. But you think about what that job really does in terms of the limitation of freedom. Think about this. It's pretty difficult to be two places at once, right? So if you're 10 years old and 12 hours of your day is spent working in a factory, assuming that you would like to get some sleep at night, you can't be in school. And as you know, school and education is key to upward mobility. So Seth Luther, what he's telling us is that if you have these 10-year-olds working in the factory all the time, you're going to have a group of haves and have-nots. And it won't be long before the have-nots consist of a gigantic army that are not only underemployed and in some cases unemployed, but unequal. In other words, we're going to drift away from America, the exception to the rule where anybody can grow up and become the next Abraham Lincoln. We're going to go and, and be the next Great Britain, the next France, the next Spain, where you have a group of landed aristocrats and a whole army of have-nots that are dependent on the factory owners for a job. That's one thing to consider. Now, the important thing in terms of the connections here is to think about this in the context of Sam Patch. Are there times throughout that book where Sam Patch says the factory owners are making policies, are making up new rules that are directly challenging, directly, directly limiting my ability to pursue freedom and happiness as a worker? Absolutely. And I will point you to some of those in just a few minutes here. But for the time being, I would like each of you to really take a special note of those, those readings. Uh, download those documents. Um, they're primarily in, in, in the online readings 9, 10, and 11. Uh, but take into consideration uh, uh, what they say as far as the central question goes. If you can do that, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to write a good paper. Um, there are three other video segments that I think it would be very helpful that you at least watch. None of them are very long. Uh, anyway, watch those video segments and it will help you write paper two.